great pleasure to welcome to the podium someone who I have partnered in classes for more years than I remember. Many, many years we have had joyful time sharing classes together. But it's a rare pleasure for me to have the honor of being with her on the platform. She is a powerful, passionate, sincere deliverer and liver of truth and a great, great strength to our Temple of Light, quietly doing the work, being the work, and she's going to deliver the work this morning. Welcome to the podium, Reverend. And I see Michael looking around the corner. <laughs> you know what you're talking. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. And I say welcome to all those joining us on the World Wide Web. It's really a really beautiful morning. I'm really hoping for rain. And I'm thinking of Jeannie Slow at this time in Bahamas. So all those who have her on WhatsApp, please send her a shout out for, for us, please. Don't forget her. <laughs> on August 25th, one of the ministers on the Centers for Central Centers for Spiritual Living Ministers Listserv Group shared the quotation from the book The Gentle Art of Blessing by Pierre Pradovan. It goes like this, the principle of infinite harmony and love governing the universe is intensely concerned about your happiness and just will not let you go until you have reached total bliss and infinite fulfillment. I'll read that again. The principle of infinite harmony and love governing the universe is intensely concerned about your happiness and just will not let you go until you have reached total bliss and infinite fulfillment. I read the, quote, the quotation <laughs> and something disturbs something in me. How can a principle you, Reverend Michael, how can a law, a principle, be in intensely concerned about whether or not we fall short of the glory of God by being out of alignment with the law of our being, which is our choice? A principle is impersonal. The law stands, no matter if we choose to break it. As a result is, we experience always the effects. So how does the phrase intensely concerned fits. I break the law, I suffer. Now the universe answers my demand for answers, came very quickly. The first quotation that came into my possession was by Dr. Holmes, our founder. It goes like this, negation may be an experience and a fact. It can never be an ultimate truth. Sorry. Negation may be an experience and a fact. It can never be an ultimate truth. Life cannot operate against itself. Always the negative is overcome by the positive. Negative experiences may seem to exist for a brief moment, but truth lasts forever. End of quote. So we go back to the statement. The principle of infinite harmony and love governing the universe. Therefore, if that is so, then anything which conflicts with that principle, something must be activated to dissolve anything unlike the tendency throughout the universe, which is always for the establishment and embodiment of harmony and love. So the fact that there is unhappiness, pain, sorrow, negations, there is an imbalance, and it must be dissolved, for the universe is one of order. Where am I going with this? Practitioners Vance Gardner and Jennifer Livingston laid the foundation for my thoughts this morning. The theme is, be gentle with yourself. Last Sunday's encouragement was great. The importance of compassion and how it plays in the development of a consciousness of freedom. That's Vance. 
And last Tuesday's spiritual mind healing service, Jennifer, it was about forgiveness. Forgiveness is key. This subtle science behind giving up the lesser for the greater. So once the imbalance of unhappiness, sorrow, pain, any negation is experienced, something moves in the universe for its correction. All stops are pulled out for the reestablishment of harmony and love, which governs the entire universe. For those who came to Reverend John's class, Shortcut to a Miracle, quantum physics explains the existence of fields, non-material patterns of energy that exert visible influence. These fields of energy exist throughout the universe. And indeed, researchers Robert John and Brenda Dunn of Princeton Engineering Anomalies Research Laboratory suggest that in mind where thoughts emerge, they too create their own fields of energy. And to quote the book, every step continues to scientifically verify the concept that the quantum realm is the transitional realm between spirit and the material world. The realm where the power, intelligence, balance, and harmony that created the universe continues to move into physical expression. So, if the impact of our consciousness affects not only the very small, which is our world, the microcosm, but also the very large, the macrocosm, the universe, then it must also affect each of us and the very events of our lives, end of quote. Therefore, the thoughts of compassion and forgiveness, which is the individual's turning or tipping point, that point of transcendence, where the lesser thought in conflict with universal harmony and love is given up to embrace that which is fully aligned with the tendency of the universe, then the energy emitted from these ideas must affect or dissolve the imbalance and rightly established that which is in total alignment with the universal flow of harmony and love. So the minute you decide in your mind that you are going to embrace that which is for your highest good, the energy that is emitted from that thought levels the playing field. Harmony and love is established in your world of affairs. That's all. The power of intention. That is what we live in. That is the kind of realm that we exist. And it is true. I think of Mr. Dexter at this time. Because Mr. Dexter sits on top there and you feel sometimes that his head is down there in the piano and he's not watching. Not true. Mr. Dexter knows everyone in here by seat. If you are missing for three or four Sundays, if Reverend John don't get the call, I get the call. Reverend Dan, tell me something. Why is so and so missing from church now three or four Sundays? I said, Mr. Dexter, I don't know. But you should know. So, all right, Mr. Dexter, I'll make the call. So, if you think that is the end of it, no? The next time Mr. Dexter call and see me, you did call her? You did call him? Yes, Mr. Dexter, so and so is the point. They need this or they need that or whatever, whatever. That is what I call the universe reaching out to establish harmony and love that we are our brother's keeper. And he used to do that up there. And you'd think that some people who you haven't seen, you haven't seen Curtis and Dr. Rosie, don't. She called me last week, Saturday night, to tell me Mr. Dexter called her four weeks ago to ask why they are not in church. You understand me now? That consciousness, Mr. Dexter emitted that field that went out, it was received, and she called to say, they soon be with us. All right? Circumstances, circumstances, as soon as they sort out themselves, they'll be here 
with us in church. So, as I said, the imbalance is rightly established and that which is in total alignment with the universal flow of harmony and love results. It is a natural process. It is what we call redemption or grace. That which is natural for us to experience without any special effort, the power of intention, or favor on our part. We live in a world full of grace. Emerson's spiritual laws tells us something which I am going to quote. Some of us may, I remember Reverend Sona talking about having a difficulty about killing a cockroach and then I found the exact statement for. There is a soul at the center of nature and over the will of every man so that none of us can wrong the universe. It has so infused its strong enchantment into nature that we prosper when we accept it as vice and when we struggle to wound its creatures, our hands are glued to our sides or they beat our own breasts. So you're sorry for the lizard that you're killing? You're sorry for the cockroach you don't want. You know you don't want them in the house, so you still do it anyway. But the fact is that there's a reluctance to do it. There's a reason why. He goes on to state that we are impelled to truth, to right and perfect contentment. So no matter what, we are always impelled to right and perfect contentment, end of quote. So scientific inf information shows the deep interrelationships we share with the entire universe and all forms. Giving credence to that truth that if a tree falls in the forest, it is felt throughout the universe. How does this information assist us in our desire to evolve into a life more abundant? Bliss and infinite fulfillment. How do we position ourselves, keeping in mind our humanity with its foibles? We are bombarded every day with information, internally from subconscious patterns of habits and behavior, and the external arena of form. We pray, we do our spiritual work, and yet we go amiss sometimes, especially in the face of some situations we have not learned from or reconciled with. How do we remain conscious and centered. Let us look at some of our, the missing, the mark incidents and plot a new approach in dealing with them. First one, something happens totally unexpected and our reaction is less than we expected our behavior should be. It is an experience. We remind ourselves and give it no power. Sometimes we are tempted to depreciate ourselves. I am a truth student. I did the necessary spiritual work and we beat upon ourselves. If we continue to consider ourselves in that light, we are in fact building a false image of ourselves. Our true identity is we are individualizations of God living spirit almighty and that cannot change. I'm the Lord thy God, I change not. We also live in a world of form, filled with race beliefs, which sometimes we become susceptible, susceptible to. The taxi man cross with path and him taking a third lane and you feel, you know, kind of anxious and miserable. But remember, don't give him any power. <laughs> Irving C. states, we cannot deny our own power and affirm it as resident in everything but ourselves. We cannot deny our own power and affirm it as resident in everything but ourselves. So we look at the condition. We don't own it or personalize it. We affirm our spiritual power there is one power, um, Maisie Prince used to love this one. There's one power, one presence in the universe. God the good omnipotent. I remember it. There's one power, one presence in the universe. God the good omnipotent. We individualize that omnipotent power. 
the condition has come to pass. Truth prevails. Restore the balance by remembering that we are resident in a universe of harmony and love and call it forth. The opposite of depreciating ourselves is not the answer either. How dare this happen to me? We have a concept of what is right and wrong and woe betide anything or anyone who runs afoul of these concepts. We set up ourselves as judge and jury. And those who afflicted or inflicted their deeds upon us will get their just due from the law of cause and effect. You know that? You know that? That stand? Mm. How do we handle this? We detach our emotions from the condition. Let empathy and love be the light of our inly sight and see beyond the mistakes and ensure that we think, feel, and act what love would do in situations like this. Sometimes persons make pronouncements on our lives contrary to the truth of our being. Let love be the light of our eyes, ears, mouth, and heart. The story is told that the great Bishop Samuel <laughs> Wilberforce, anybody know that name? Yes, all right, was a remarkable man. He actually received, listen to this, he actually received religious conversion long after he became a clergyman. You would have thought that. Yeah, well. It is said that one night before his conversion, he was thinking of the wickedness of the world and it bothered him. He was so bothered by the wickedness of these people so unlike him. So he thought that something terrible would happen to humanity as God would surely punish them. So he decided to stay up all night and prayed to save the world. His heart was in a good place, but the approach, I might have a difficulty with that. Anyway, he knelt down and hour after hour, he besought God not to destroy the world. And in his words, Bishop Wilberforce stated that God spoke to him in the middle of the night and said, go to bed now, Sam. I will take charge of the universe for the rest of the night. I love it. <laughs> you can just imagine. <laughs> Go to bed now, Sam. <laughs> for I will take charge of the universe for the rest of the night. Uh, a funny story, but the underlying truth is that there is indeed only one. One universal presence equally present everywhere, and we are individualizations of its presence. How far can we wander? No matter where we find ourselves in any state of mind, thou art there. Psalm 139, 7 to 10. Whither shall I go from thy spirit, or whither shall I flee from thy presence? As I ascend up into heaven, thou art there. If I make my bed in hell, behold, thou art there. If I take the wings of the morning and dwell in the utmost parts of the sea, even there shall thy hand lead me, and thy right hand shall hold me. So we can't go anywhere. God is right there. So we can make the effort to be conscious and see that presence in every situation and person. With this in mind, we will ultimately succeed in living a life more abundant, blissful, and fulfilling. So in summary, let us start at the beginning. Go within to that intelligence and wisdom. Stop. Take a breath. Call forth the answers. We need to embrace any situations. In our class, it's called lesson, lessons or blessings they still fall under the same category. Because of that, you can be calm and call upon your authority over any situation. Let strength and courage reinforce our steps to our higher good. Because sometimes imbalance at a particular part of our journey prepares us for a greater expression of ourselves down the road. 
so we can tap into our intu intuition, seek guidance that will come in the face of all that needs to be implemented. Secondly, take control and build a mental equivalent of what our world of affairs feels like and looks like. Awaken our faculty of imagination. We dwell in a limitless realm. Our book minister, Fuller, he's an architectural genius, states, and I quote, you never change things by fighting existing reality. To change something, build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Use forgiveness. Give up what does not serve you and embrace a new model of feeling, thoughts, ideas, actions, habits, and behavior that enforce our happiness and joy. Compassion again at all times, so we seek to build this new model of joy, happiness, and bliss, and be gentle with ourselves. Yes, we live in limitlessness, but we have to be practical. If you're going to climb Blue Mountain as one of your the thing on your bucket list, find out why you want to go up there first. Huh? How you're going to go up there, where it is, and then you get fit and join a mountain climbing group. Right? That makes sense, don't? If you're building a house, buy the land, get the architect, get plans approved, financing in place, and pray every step of the way until you sit in the living room. Reason out every step of making that new equivalent, that new model, the building of the building process. Every step ensure that you enjoy and learn more about yourself, ourselves, as we move through the layers of consciousness that support our thrust to live a blissful life of peace, beauty, and joy. Always trust in your own spiritual power. We are here to succeed. We can be as passionate as we can, grow and unfold through this movement, upwards and onwards, and always remember to rest in that consciousness of God, living spirit almighty. Every step, celebrate our union with God. I'm going to give you some homework after this about resting in that consciousness and celebrate. We are entitled to have, be, or do by the grace of God's unlimited favor so we can be gentle with ourselves. We must remain alert and conscious. For if, if you're still building an equivalent for perfect health, you cannot support a lifestyle that is opposite to that. For prosperity, the same thing. Our new being must support a prosperous lifestyle, cannot entertain thoughts, feelings, behavior, patterns in conflict to what it is that we want. We have what we have by right of consciousness. So you first give thanks for it. You praise and bless it, and it will increase. That means everything and everyone in our world must experience that praising and blessing. If you're doing it for yourself, do it for everybody. Reverend Elmo will tell you, give all things a silent blessing at all times. You remember that statement? Give everything a silent blessing. So I'm going to give you an affirmation, and it has a rhythm. I bless you. I bless you with the increase of God's unlimited good. So say to your friend beside you, I bless you. I bless you with the increase of God's unlimited good. Nice, don't. Let no sound. You want to do it again? I bless you. I bless you with the increase of God's unlimited good. Friends, this is a daily process to live in beauty, love, and joy. And observe the, diff the difference in your life. Celebrate as we move upwards and onwards. We must strive to live by principle as the entire universe supports our efforts to become spirit's highest idea of ourselves. We are always moving in a state of transition to our highest good, no matter how good it gets. We always went better the good to best and then best the best onwards. It's infinity we live in, friends. So we go back to the beginning. 
the principle of infinite harmony and love governing the universe is intensely concerned about your happiness and just will not let you go until you have reached total bliss and infinite fulfillment. I bless you. Namaste.